And here we are. Welcome to the Fans View, KAZI, 88.7, Travis Kent, Douglas Washington. You know, normally, then I would say Corey Moe from KB24. We got an email from Corey this week. It says something to the effect of, hey guys, you know our cute little radio show? Well, I got some big time sports work to do in New Orleans, so I'm going to... Never heard of it. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna head to New Orleans and and work on that some. That little dinky town. Yeah, I know, I know. So you know, so Douglas had this great idea. He said, you know what? Let's call our buddy Albert Burdett. <laughs> well, so so uh, sitting next to me, Longhorn legend Albert Burdett <laughs> and Stephanie. I don't want to forget Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I am very glad to be here this morning. Yeah, very excited. Appreciate you being in studio with us. Um, uh, we've also um, uh, Marion Nickerson running the board for us until Jay until Jay gets here. <laughs> we, so we appreciate Marion filling in for him. Um, we got lots. I tell you what, there's lots to go over. Obviously, today we have been leading up to this for a while. Today we will have a real hard discussion about. Um, I guess we'll talk. We'll, we'll say the New York the New Year Six bowl game, but specifically we'll talk about the two big semifinal matchups: Texas and Washington, Alabama and Michigan. We kind of put those off, and we'll have a probably a big segment to end today's show on uh, those two games. A lot of NFL to talk about. We've got another stumble by the Cowboys on the road at Miami. Uh, you know, no shame in losing on the road to a, what's another good football team, a playoff team. Yeah. But once again, another playoff team that Dallas doesn't beat, uh, if you want to look at it that way. So we've got some of that to talk about. C.J. Stroud looks to be cleared from concussion protocol. He'll be back for the Texans this week. Can't wait to see that. Philadelphia survives at home against the Giants. <laughs> I don't think we saw that coming. No. Uh, and you, th- you did say Jay Hunt is coming? Jay Hunt's coming. With, when he gets here, I want to save that conversation for when he gets here. Jay Hunt. As, a, as a, the resident Eagles fan. That's right. Uh, Jay Hunt <laughs> is coming. Uh-huh. We got UT basketball tonight. Oh. We do. We got uh, University of North Carolina Greensboro. Mm-hmm. That's one of those trap games where, yeah, you know, yeah. you got to you gotta be ready for that one. So we will attend that game, so I'm looking forward to that one. I want to say Greensboro's got a big win over a top 15 team this year. Um, I'll, 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 look, I'll look it up here in just a minute. But okay. I want to say I was looking at somebody's resume the other day, and, and they, they – um, not uh, uh, maybe Kentucky? Did uh-huh. Kentucky drop one to Greensboro? Um, maybe I was watching that Kentucky Louisville game, and they were in. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll we'll talk about. It. But Gr- Greensboro, um, I think what Greensboro probably over the, what the last decade has yes. made what seven NCAA tournaments. They're not a bad program. Not a bad program. And it's a great all. recruiting area. It's oh, highly certainly. populated. There's some amazing athletes that come out of North Carolina, and I'm I'm starting to see that they're starting to grab a few of them. Have, so, one of the unintended consequences of the transfer portal um, has been, in, in my viewpoint, what you can consider a, a non-big-time or, a, you know, are, are the non-Power 5 conferences. If, if, you're, if you go to, the, which that's a hotbed of basketball, right? I mean, yeah. you, you can hit, like, driver pitching wedge and hit another school that plays good basketball, Wake Forest, yes. Duke, North Carolina, NC State. Yep. All you got all these schools in this one small area yeah. mm-hmm. that all have great basketball tradition. Um, and a uh, Carolina Greensboro is a school that, if puts together a good enough resume, you know, a young man just commits to Duke, gets there, gets buried on the bench, is looking for some place where he can transfer immediately and play. Schools like that can draw those guys in um, and use that transfer portal to their uh, uh, to their benefit. A great place to live. Uh, if you've never heard of the Triangle, uh, it's a big technology corridor, uh, great comfort uh, lifestyle. If you're over there, you've got that Wake Forest, so you've got some research and technology. You've got that Chapel Hill. You've got Raleigh. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a great location to be at uh, in a few years i think that that part of north carolina will elevate itself but that eastern north carolina corridor it is a great destination and if you can get ahead of that that curve and go to a school like this i, I think i think you're going to be there you know this was 
I'm so glad you're here, Albert. To 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 what to what Travis was saying earlier. If we gonna throw if we gonna throw a oop of somebody to come sit in today. <laughs> Who else than the rim rocker himself, Albert Bird? Hey, I appreciate it, sir. I, do appreciate I, I appreciate, appreciate being you being here. in. I'm just kind of curious then. So, is it okay to take a step back necessarily? So, if I'm at Duke and I'm a big time player like you, but I'm at Duke. I'm sorry. This is just this is just a, a hypothetical yeah, uh-huh. because he's wearing he's wearing the long hair short shirt today. People, he was Always. not feeling me when I said that. Always. He said I ain't no blue devil. <laughs> but 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 stay with me, sir. And uh, wait. His mate, his mate is rocking the Detroit Lion, though. <laughs> what a great year they had. We go, you know what? We 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 gonna come to them. We're we're we're, we're fair weather uh, commentators here, so we are gonna talk Detroit. <laughs> but 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 Mr. Burdett. Yes. Could you do you think it's okay to believe in yourself and say I'm gonna leave Duke and go to Greensboro where I can like build something? How, how, what what do you say about that when people take a step? I, I hate to see this when they take a step down. You know what? Uh, most of those Division One players were the guy at their high school. Yeah. You know, they were the number one go-to guy. So, if it was me, I don't want to sit on the bench for two or three years before I get my opportunity to show what I can do. So, yeah. taking a step down, um, depending on the player, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a bad situation. Uh, if I want to show my talents, you know, you only got a short window of opportunity to show that talent. So. I don't want to waste two or three years sitting on the bench. So if I have to take a step down to a, first say, lesser university, yeah, I would definitely uh, consider that. Because when you think about it, we were talking about John Moran earlier. He went to Murray State. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you told me you were leaving right. Duke to go to Murray State, I'd be like, ah, you kind of you're settling right there. And no disrespect to our Murray State fans, not at all. But we, we're just saying he was a he was a person huh? that was found. And he, we're talking about him now. I mean, this guy. We're talking to MVP conversations about that. So that's that's why I wanted to I wanted to to, to get your take on that, Mr. Brady, because I don't have them skills. I don't have that level. And I think that the ego is attached. Where you say, Nah, bro. Okay, it ain't working out in Duke. Man, I got to go to another Power Five. I, I this is where I belong because I am this. You know, that's that's difficult when you go from one Power Five school to another. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. If you go from a Duke to a North Carolina. North Carolina already has their foundation set up. Yeah. So it's going to be hard to come in and be a part of that foundation. Yes. So me personally, I think I would go from a power five to another power five because I believe in the skills that I have yes. and the skills that I could bring to that other power five team. Yeah. And and, and it's the, it's the, especially, I, f- I feel especially in college basketball, um, it feels like we have more young players that declare for the draft um and and whether they get drafted or not i mean you know remember we we what was it a couple of years ago there were um like 85 underclassmen declared for the draft well there's only two rounds in the nba draft 60 so, players so, so every <laughs> everyone knows they're not going to get drafted but what they're saying is they're ready to move on with their career right whether that be g league whether that means overseas, overseas. That, that, that just means they're done with college, they're ready to move on with their career in whatever career that makes sense for them. And so um, w- one of the things, you know, you know, there's always room for opportunity. Um, you know, you see, you see a, 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 a post player, tra- you know, uh, go out early, and you see a recruiting list that shows a post player coming in. Mm-hmm. But if you're a sophomore or a junior and think, well, I'm going to go in and be the true freshman. Right. Um, I, I I can go in and, and, and be their stopgap to help them get through um, this year or two before that that kid's ready to play. Um, so that's it's it's you know so so I did fine. So Greensboro in back to back about a month ago played Vanderbilt on the road and Arkansas on the road. Lost by four to Vanderbilt. Then three days later goes uh, into Fayetteville and beats Arkansas by four. So. So t- this is a school that's not not yeah. afraid to play anybody. Not at all. A, a, a ranked, a top 20 Arkansas team, too. Now, this isn't the Nolan Richardson team. No, but, not at all. But they were 14. They were ranked 14. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's legit. My right. thing is, rankings, you can be ranked 1st or 25th. It, you still have to play the game. I, yes, sir. The, I, think, I think college basketball, to me, is the ranking I pay least attention to until late January. Right. Um, just because... Uh, one, um, very few teams run off. 
I think maybe maybe there was a point in time when we saw more teams get through their non-conference schedule undefeated. And so you would see six, seven, eight teams get to January. You know, January 1 is essentially, it's usually kickoff a conference, that's it. right? That's conference. So that's usually kickoff a conference mm-hmm. is right around New Year's Day. Um, and so you used to see, I think, more teams go undefeated through that. And so, yeah, you would have this, these rankings with six, seven undefeated teams. Well, now the, we have these matchup tournaments that get put on um, in Madison Square Garden and in Las Vegas and in different places. And they are matching Matching up top teams yeah. all the time, yeah. so it's almost impossible to go through your non-conference schedule undefeated. And so, you know, I mean, you know, you go from one, and then they drop you to six, and then they move you to three, and then you lose another game, you go to eight, and then you beat the number two team in the country, they move you back to three, and then I'm like, what? Well, can I just stop looking at this until we get to like halfway through the conference season? <laughs> I, I agree with you, and. and Division one basketball, you can win, lose, move up and down. Mm-hmm. It's different. In, college, in football, if you lose a game, that can be your whole season. Right, right. So that's exactly right. I really don't pay attention to the rankings, like you said, until January first. And, and 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 by the way, the conference season is going to seed you for the conference tournament, and then after the conference tournament's over. By the way, there's a as opposed to college football, where there's just a four team playoff. There's a what is it 68, 68 team 68, <laughs> 68, yeah, 68, 68 team <laughs> playoff for for college basketball. So we figure we find out in college basketball we don't need rankings. Rankings are just there for let's face it for ESPN to have something to talk about. Something to talk about. Good, <laughs> good conversation. Good conversation. That's yeah, right. I agree. All right. So so we got some college basketball we can talk about as well. Um, you know I I I I, I think. The NFL is where we spend a lot of time. We'll get some NFL talk out of the way. Also, another thing we need to talk about, Douglas. What's that? Is we've got history being made. <laughs> I already know what you're talking about. Do, do we have to do this I, while she's wearing the Lions jersey? I was, I was shirt. <laughs> I was white knuckling it last night. It, it went to overtime. It went to overtime. Yeah. But the Pistons pulled it out. <laughs> <laughs> Failure gonna fail. <laughs> I was talking to Albert and Stephanie off, uh, off air about this before we came in here, and uh, and Albert can shed a, a, maybe a little, probably a lot more light on the feeling <laughs> of being on a team when you're playing well, and a feeling of being on a team when you're oh, not playing man. well, and what that means to the psyche overall. Um, and and just the ups and downs that the mm-hmm. Pistons team is going through right now. I, for me, I've never seen anything like it. Mm-hmm. But like we were talking about earlier, winning is contagious. But on the flip side, so is losing. You get used to losing those close games or when you're at a point where you could possibly, possibly win, you're so used to losing, you find a way to lose. But to me... I just feel like you have to win one of those. You have to luck up and win a game. Yeah, especially at the professional level. It you know it, I was I I turned on. I just this has to have been a week ago. Um, so I and I I look at the standings about once a week. I, I've told you guys I just, I just don't watch a lot of NBA basketball before Christmas Day. I kind of start paying attention. At that point, I look at some standings. I watch highlights, but I did flip across a Spurs game the other day. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, and you know, I, I see a Spurs game. I'm like, well, let's check in on Women Yama. Let's see how he's doing. Right, and by he's playing really well this year. And I look down, and the record for the Spurs is three and twenty, and it said they're currently on an 18 game losing streak. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, even I can do that math. <laughs> that means they started off the season three and two. Yeah. And they haven't won a game since then. Now, this is a week ago. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't know where they're sitting at at this point. Well, they um, beat the Lakers. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, there so, you go. I mean, that's that was the high point for Wimby. Yeah. <laughs> to do that. But, Albert. Yes. I, I, I don't want to make excuses, right? But I think I know why they still losing, and I want to see since you played at the highest level right. out of the three of us. Unless we're gonna talk about archery, because I think I can get him with that big man. I don't think he got I, me in I, that I, one, Travis. I, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty competitive. So <laughs> I, I would give you, I'll give you a run for your money. No man, I, I went with the most obscure thing that I'm good at. Yeah. But, but he he he's got confidence, sir. Does there come a point where everybody's out there? They're on the national stage. They're NBA players. 
And now everyone thinks that they are the hero and they're thinking, oh, I can fix this. I'm the one that's going to, this is, the game is mine today. I can do it. And I think, I think that could be one of the factors where you start to press. They're, they're starting to feel it instead of team ball and, and relying on the system because the system done failed us. <laughs> insert, insert political rant, but I feel like that's where they're at. And that's another reason why it keeps going south. The, the confidence just isn't there. And maybe you play a little hero ball? You can play hero ball. Hero ball might get you a win here or a win there. But team ball is going to get you those consistent wins on a daily night in, night out basis. Um, and they have good players on that team. Yes, sir. They have very talented individual players on that team. But that's just what a, they are, individual players. Yeah. If, you, if you're not playing team ball, you're, you're not going to win on a night in, night out basis, period. So so how do how do I make sure we don't turn? You said it yourself. They got good players on that team. So they got Cade Cunningham. He's still playing. He logged 43 minutes last night. And at a point, he we know he's our leader. Right. Uh, the, the, the Thompson brother is back. Uh, he only played 12 minutes. Bruh. We giving you 43 minutes, and you still ain't helping us with a win. We went to overtime, got it. It's still an L. Why don't I get a little bit more? If I'm Bogdanovich, uh, well, th that's a bad example. But if I'm right. Bogdanovich, uh, maybe I need more shots. If I'm Ivy, the point guard, again, he starts to think, I handle this thing. I'm the one dishing. Maybe I should take more shots. He only took 15 last night to include that's over all the overtime. You don't think that starts to creep in? And we we gonna have some some locker room discussions. Oh, definitely. I definitely think that's a big part of the locker room discussion. I also think a big part of their situation right now is the locker room. So, uh -huh. Somebody has to have the the, the the say all in the locker room. Somebody has to step up and be a leader. Who's who's the leader on that team? Not the one that's scoring the most points or dishing out the most assists. Somebody got to say. Not the coach. Not the assistant coaches. Somebody can say, look, this is enough. You know, we are professionals. I mean, I just, I wouldn't be able to sleep if I was in that situation. Hmm. I just wouldn't. That would, that would consume me on a day-to-day -day basis. Somebody just has to step up and say, look, enough is enough. Let's turn this culture around. It's all about culture. You know, culture is, is a, a state of mind. And right now, they're just not in the right state of mind. The coach, it's a losing culture. So can can I can I offer y'all something of what you just said, Albert? Yes. Who's the Who's the leader on the team? Right. I want to say we have so much in common on this team. They're, they're, I looked it up. They're the ninth youngest. So I, I wanted to blame it on them being the youngest, but they got some failures on that team. James Weissman. We all know how heralded he was coming out of Memphis with oh, yeah. Penny Hardaway. Oh, yeah. And then he went to Golden State, and they said, oh, we, we messed up on this big dude. They got him out of there. Marvin Bagley. We were talking Duke earlier. He came out of Duke. He's been jettisoned to that team. So when I start to look down this roster and I see these players up there, I don't know who the leader is. I mean, and, and, and I want I would want to say I'm going to go to the old head. I'm going to go to whoever the oldest is. Right. But that don't mean nothing. Old head, if you're only getting, you're not Udonis Haslam not with a all. chip no, on your shoulder. Not at all. You're only getting 12 minutes. What you going to talk to me about? There's really nothing that the old head on that team yes. can talk to those young guys about. Yeah. I mean, like you said, being young is definitely a, a big part of their situation right yes, now. Yes, sir. Yeah. But still, like we talked about earlier, you got to luck up and win a game or two somewhere in there. You, you, it's just, I can't fathom not winning a game in that stretch that they're in right now. I, I just want to drop one other little thing to you uh, when it comes to, I know we're in a different day and age of the NBA. They took 43 threes last night, Detroit. Ooh. They only made 14. Now that's 32%. So they at least shot better than the Celtics, which ain't saying much, no, uh, because we know you don't look at that team and be like, oh, they got some knockdown three point shooters on right, there. We, right. we don't we don't expect that from that team. But when when you get to this point, they only took nineteen free throws total in the game. Albert, I'm a point guard. That's all I've known to my life. I'm only five five. Right. I know that I'm taking it to the cup because I'm faster than a lot of people, yeah. and I know I want to draw. I want to foul you out, Albert. And I just feel like. When you got 27 in a row, 
You gotta go hard to. I feel like you settling when you taking all these threes. You gotta go. You gotta go mix it up. We trying to get a win. My thing is this: if I'm on that team, if I'm the coach, or if I'm the so-called captain of that team, after the 25th loss, <laughs> I'm like, look, man. <laughs> If, if we lose 26 to 27, we better have about seven to eight of us that are fouled out of this game. That's right. Right? I, you know? I, I agree. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's. I think that's I think that's the point that's um, when you watch them play now is so somebody on that team needs to call that team meeting to say, look, guys, if if they're going to beat us tonight, it's going to be the ugliest game <laughs> they've ever won Thank in their you. lives. Exactly. I, I mean, like, be, like, uh, like the first guy that hits the lane is hitting the ground. Is hitting the ground. Now, <laughs> it's, now. I, you know, I, I, I'm sorry. That's at some point. I remember my daughter one time playing a soccer game. Um, it was a new team she had been on. They were playing a really good team out of the Houston area. This girl scored five goals against them. Ooh. And then late in the game, a girl comes into the box, and my daughter played a played a played as a defenseman. Yeah. Um, and. Took a took a foul. Girl got a penalty shot. And she made the penalty shot and all that. Afterwards, I said, "So what was up with that penalty?" She goes, "She had to hit the ground." I I was like, "Yep, yep I, I'm okay I, with that." Yeah, I am, I am okay with that. Yeah, definitely. So I want to pick on the big man because we're on there. I don't think he'll strangle me on there, right? No, let me, let, not. Let me look to his spouse. <laughs> will, will he? Have you seen him? No, no, no. But Albert, I, I think we'll get Albert. Through it. <laughs> what, th- this is why, and and. I, Anyway, I got to be me. I like to pick, especially on bigger dudes. Hey, go ahead. The, there's only one person to what you said. Remember I said we got we to change things up, right? Yeah. And, and, and he just said we got to put people on the ground. Only one person fouled out last night, and that was the point guard. What Big man, what, why ain't y'all fouling out? Ain't y'all supposed to be in forces, 6'10", 250 dudes? I mean, I what I, happened? Just, I don't get it. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like nobody's, nobody's bought in and trying to end it, in my opinion. I'm just going off my opinion. I'm not in there. This is all we could do is conjecture, but I feel like somebody got to have that point guard's back. He, it's not like he got fouled out. He wasn't playing against Iverson. Right. I can understand if Iverson fired you out. He too quick. But on that team, we not we not necessarily scared of the the speed on that team. When you're talking about their guards, you got you got Holiday, you got White. Ah, and nobody they not blowing past no, me. No, they're not. And they're not known for that. So he fouled out. He took some stuff. He's trying his best. I just, I wonder. I just wonder yeah. about the teamwork, why everyone else didn't have the same thoughts that Travis was saying that his daughter had. And, and so that's just, that's just leading me. I just wanted you to, to see what I think of the, of the locker room and the lack of um, angst to get out of this losing streak. I, I agree with you. And I agree with your daughter. <laughs> if, if we lose the next, let her know that. Yeah. yeah. If, if we lose the next game, it's because we had to forfeit at the end of the game. Thank you. Because we didn't have enough players to finish the game. I'll take right. that. Because yeah. we didn't all fouled out. Yeah. And I'm okay with that as a coach. Yeah. But for you to go through a game like that and only have one foul, two fouls. I mean, come on, man! You got to do something different to change this around. I don't believe in dirty ball. I don't. I don't believe Not in undercutting all. anybody. Not like, at all. But but I do believe in hard fouls. Yes. I do believe ain't nothing easy over here. No. I will. You're bigger than me. I will come foul you because yeah. I want you to not. I want you to know. I'm at least gonna come challenge you. Right. You, you're gonna go over top. Hopefully, I, I make you use a sky hook. Like, <laughs> you don't drop that shoulder. I want you to bail out with a with a sky hook. But I gotta at least do that. I gotta. I have to make you at least think. Maybe you'll pass it out next time. Right. But that you ain't getting none of that. And then you're again. You're settling when you're shooting all those threes. I'm I'm, I'm an old guy on, on my lawn, telling kids to get off my lawn with that. But 43 threes, that ain't the way. Y'all yeah. y'all not known for that. It's not. Uh, I mean, the, ga- the game has changed so much it's from uh, all around game. Everybody's shooting three, even the big men. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all they're doing is shooting threes. Um, but I'm like you. Somebody has to take a hard foul yeah. and make that other player second guess the next time they come through there. Yes, sir. So hopefully they'll get it turned around. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's it'll be interesting to watch. There, there's. Look, they're they're not alone in in suffering right now. <laughs> Obviously, we talked about the Spurs. The Spurs only have five wins. Yeah. 
Um, like there's another five win team. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the uh, standings. The again. Wizards. The Wizards only have five wins. <laughs> um, wow. There's so you know there's always going to be some teams at the bottom that struggle. Um, this just happens to be one of those monumental years when we've got a team that that just can't get the you know that 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 lucky break or that whatever it is and now it's time like we said it's time to make your own breaks right it's time to make your own break and you know what the crazy thing about that that losing streak and they can get one or two under mm. their belt who says that doesn't turn around that's right that's who, right who says that doesn't turn around and they get a big win here a lucky win here now all of a sudden hey yep. we're, we're on a different streak that's two right. games in a row yep then three four five and so on yep you have NBA players. You can you can get they got they got these these two wins already because of the people they had on the yeah. team. So, all right, we need to get to a break. We'll come back right after that. We're going to hit the uh, NFL when we come back. We got we are in the playoff stretch. Um, nobody, everybody wants to uh, to to be drinking Gatorade on Christmas, <laughs> and we had a lot of Gatorade drank on Christmas. We'll talk about some of those games right here on the Fans View KAZI eighty eight point seven. And we're back on the Fans View, KAZI 88.7. Travis Kent, Douglas Washington, Albert Burdett, Longhorn legend, sitting in with us today. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. Filling in for Corey Mose, who had to big time us and go out and do, you know actually do media work. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was our representative? But hey, I didn't know that. Those I, 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 I do, though, encourage everybody to watch KV24's coverage of, uh, of the Longhorns out in uh, – um, New Orleans. I have direct TV, so it's much harder for me to watch him. Right. Mm-hmm. I've got to go get my rabbit ear. I got to go dig the rabbit ears out of the garage <laughs> and hook them up to the console TV and I'll see if I can't pick it up. But Jay Hunt back on the board for us. We appreciate Jay sitting in. Um, Want to give a quick shout out uh, for uh, uh, for Albert, uh, Bobby Mack, and, and Ray Jackson um, with their. Uh, uh, I want to. I want to send a shout locker room out vodcast to my 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 brother from another mother, Ray Jackson, and the uh, the podcast that he does. He's doing a great job over there. I also want to sh- send a shout out to uh, my other brother, Bobby Mack, and his business, uh, Tater Q. Mm-hmm. Them guys are doing great things over there, serving up great food. Uh, we'll probably stop over there tomorrow. Hey, Bobby, make sure you heard this, man, and we stop by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Ray, Ray and Bobby do a, um, a, they call it the Locker Room Vodcast. Yes. But, yeah, so um, you can you can look that up. I, I tell you what, I, I don't know, you, you listen to podcasts very often? I don't, but I do listen to theirs. Okay, so I, I, I did not listen to podcasts until about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I picked up a couple here and there. Um, uh, Joel Klatt, uh, in a, uh, college football, Fox college football yeah. commentator. I yes. listen to Joel Klatt's. Yeah. Um, I pick up a few strays here and there where I'll just hear something, but you know what got me into it is my girlfriend listens to those murder podcasts all the time. Oh, <laughs> there's some good ones. My, my lady does the same thing. We got one of those, fri- we got one of those refrigerators that has like a entertainment unit in it. It's got, you can play Alexa and all that stuff oh, in there. Oh yeah. I know when she's cooking. Because all I hear throughout the house is our refrigerator and a murder podcast. <laughs> I'm like, well, it must be dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, I want to give a shout out to Bobby Mack and Ray, and Ray Jackson on, on, on yes, our sir. Yes, but, sir. So we got a call. We need to get into the. Uh, we need to get to Flugerville man. Flugerville man, you there? Yes. Uh, good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning. I want to shoot straight to the chase of uh, the college playoff game on Monday. Uh, the first one. Uh, it's going to be out at the Rose Bowl out in California, Michigan, and uh, Alabama. You know what they say about Nick Saban? If he has a long time to prepare for you, more than likely, uh, he can beat you. So on that note, I'm taking Alabama on that one. On the second game in the Sugar Bowl uh, down in New Orleans, uh, got Texas and Washington. If you remember last year, they came in and beat us, but we had more like a skeleton team. This time I'm taking Texas because their offensive line and defensive line. And so with that, I'm going to have Alabama and Texas, and I'm taking the long horn. Horn up. You know, there are a lot of people predicting a rematch of Alabama-Texas, um, and a lot of people interested to see mm-hmm. how much better has Jalen Milrow gotten, and can is, is that 
against that Texas defense. I, mm. I, I will tell you careful that what you wish for. It, it's, yeah. it, it is careful what you wish. Yeah. for. He looks better. It, 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 you're, you're exactly right. Um, so it'll be it'll be very interesting to see these two games. We're going to break them down on our own later in this show. But appreciate you bringing those up, Fluvio no, Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think uh, you're going to love when we dive into that, Fluvio Man. I, we we have so much to say. What, what else you got? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was want to uh, give a shout-out to the Cowboys. I like that game coming on tomorrow with uh, with the Lions and the Cowboys. Yeah, so and the, I'm trying to- the only – I'll real, real quick. The only issue I have with it is, you know how um, ABC is billing this thing? They're calling it Monday yeah. Night Football on Saturday. Why? <laughs> yeah, why? Why? Yeah. Why? why not just call it a special edition of Saturday Night Football? Mm-hmm. Makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, why not? Sorry, that's just yeah. a pet peeve. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> that'll work, yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering about, I was so upset that we lost that game to Miami. We yeah. could have won that game. If you remember, I don't know who number 44 or number 40 was, but he fumbled that ball, right? I mean, it was just like, it never got to his hands. Or yeah, something. it never got to so his hands. Could, that could be the cattle tail, man. That could have be been the winner for us. Yeah. But that's... you know what I think? What, why, why we lost that game, too? Miami was driving, right? And one of the cornerbacks or uh, somebody grabbed the face mask. Mm-hmm. Look real bad. I'm saying that he didn't have to grab the face mask I'm looking at. Yeah. So that was the one thing that caused us to lose that game. But can't cry with spilled milk. Get ready for the bar. Yep. Yep. All right, Flukeville, man. You got anything else for us? That's it. Have a nice, happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year's to you, you Mr. Flukeville, man. We appreciate you calling in, as always. 512-836-2887. You can get your calls and comments in as well. And he did bring up the NFL, and we want to get started talking about the NFL as we head towards towards the New Year's. We're down um, two... I, so everybody except for the Cleveland Browns and um, the who did they play last night? Cleveland just demolished the Jets. The, the Jets, Jets last yeah. night. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was watching. I was watching Oklahoma play. So I I, I I was just getting updates on that Cleveland game. By the way, we do have to talk about Joe Flacco. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but but before that, we do have a caller on the line, and so we are going to jump into the lines and see who this caller might be. Caller, you there? Yes, sir. This is, man, I, I've been trying to get in touch with y'all. It's kind of hard, man, you know. Hey, we're very popular people. Very popular. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Oklahoma. You. Appreciate you calling in. Did you watch the game last night? Yeah, man. You know, I wanted to talk about, say something to Douglas. So, Douglas, you are stuck on that NBA, and you got dog it, man. You know, I'm just, I'm I'm just like Travis, man. I don't really watch. I watch the NBA, but not like that until like the playoffs, you know. So, you so what what did I, you make me feel like I dived in? <clears throat> excuse me. You make me feel like I dived in too much. What what exactly? Where did I lose you? I mean, we are looking well, at something historic. Did, did we go too much Detroit Pistons for you? Well, you I know, think he's like wondering said, how did you I, know who I plays for Detroit? Who won, who won, <laughs> hey, who won that game last night uh, with Detroit? Oh, it was not them. Boston. It was the, the Boston. Celtics. Yeah. Boston. Yep. The Celtics, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had brought up Houston. You had brought up Houston me before back in the past. Man, why did you bring Houston up? I don't even know who's on the Houston team. They're the same old Houston. They are the same old Houston, man. But that's the crib for you. You you should be knowing about them Rockets. Especially yeah, but I am, man. Y'all, but y'all, they got, they, they're going to have to do a lot better for me to what, really, just really pay who, attention to them because they just like the San Antonio Spurs. Hold on know? now. Watch your mouth. First of all, <laughs> you better rep where you're from because the Rockets are not as bad as they were last year. they 15 and 14 right now, Albert. So he – Not bad. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them, Albert. Now, last year, y'all were the Spurs, the Spurs who were 5 and 25. So don't tell me they like the Spurs, man. Be happy. They're above 500. Trust me, Spurs – fans would like to be above 500 trailblazers fans would like to be above 500 the memphis grizzlies even though now they got job back would yep. like to be above you in a good place get them boys some chance amen that's all yeah, i gotta say I am amen gonna, i am you, you get that reference you get that reference you, you know what i'm talking about amen 
Yeah. All right then. I'm going I'm going I'm going to give them some chance, man, but they need when they get in the playoff, I I pay more attention to it. No. But I don't want to no. say I don't want to say all the time on the phone on on the NBA. Why? I want to hey, talk you, about the game. We got time. I want to talk about the game last night with Oklahoma, man. I can't get him. I can't get him. <laughs> he yeah. sidestepped me. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to get you riled up. Yeah, because, man, I'm going to tell you, OU, man, they, I watched it. I did watch the game last night, Travis. Yeah. Yeah. And, man, that was that was just pitiful. It was pitiful. And that little freshman quarterback, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not too bad. I'm not too mad at him because he's a freshman. He ain't never been in that situation before, man. But I'm going to tell you, I think the fans that OU is, is mumbling about Brett Venable, man. I really do. <laughs> so I knew you were going to go there. Uh, what, here's what I could tell you. You got to give the young guy a chance. Can we talk about the positives? Yeah. Did, yeah didn't you see? Yeah. Didn't you see a couple things that got you a little excited for the future? Yeah. Because yeah, your, your starting quarterback ain't walking quarter. through that door. I seen him in the first quarter. He did pretty good. But you know, after like in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, man. I mean, I said it about twelve o'clock. I said to myself, these guys, they gonna lose. Wait, and wait a minute. Ben better get it. He better get himself together for next year. So in the third quarter, when he had 24 points on the board, he had he put 14 on the on the board in the second quarter. Came out of the half, put 10 up on the clock. You 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 got to be happy about that. Yeah, I, you know I'm, he, he don't play know, defense. I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying that I'm not too mad at at, at the freshman because he. Okay. You sure. know, this transfer mm-hmm. portal, man, is really kind of, it's helping some teams and it's hurting some teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really, I mean, like, oh, you, you, we didn't have about, we got a deep, we had a defensive line. He transferred. Mm-hmm. Two quarterbacks out of OU, they, they, you know, they going to another place, you know. Well, I, and, I, and it's, it's hurting on you. Okay. So then what, so. I don't know why I'm defending you because I was trying to get you riled up with the Rockets. But I want to tell you this. Y'all got something in that freshman, Gavin Sawchuck. He looked good yeah, last yeah, night. Am I do. right? That boy was averaging nine yards a carry. He finished with 134 yards. And then your receivers look great. Uh, you know, Stoops, Stoops did his thing. He, he ain't just carrying that family yeah. name, getting, yeah. getting getting in off of Bob Stoops. I, I For the future... I'm okay with Oklahoma and where it could develop. Yeah, Drake Stoops, Stoops is gone. Uh, they'll have to replace yeah, him. But yeah. Farouk on the outside, um, uh, on one side, and then I okay, we'll we'll forget the Bren- guy's name. Brennan Thompson well, Bren- had yeah, 83 yards. Yeah, Brennan Thompson uh, flashed early. You know, he was he's been hurt most of the season. He really just came back a few weeks ago. Nick Anderson. Uh, Nick Anderson. They got yeah. Nick Anderson on the other. Yeah. So Farouk and Anderson on the outside are the two guys. The the, the thing about them, Nick Anderson um, needs to put another 15 pounds on this week. Yeah. He's got this year. He's yeah. got he's got to hit the weight room yeah. this off season. Um, Farouk, um, I think. Looks really good. He did cough up a ball late in the game that um, that they 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 eventually called a catch and a and a fumble, but I I don't know that he actually caught it. Uh, uh, but they 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 are the types of receivers that we're used to Oklahoma seeing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but they still need seasoning. They were just young this year. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think they'll I think they'll continue to get better. And that that running back. The freshman, he Salt caught yeah. three balls for 42. Yeah. So he ran for 130. He he caught another 42. I, yeah, that but cupboard isn't bare. Mr. Oklahoma, the big thing that I noticed last night, that was an SEC officiating crew, but it was like a hodgepodge crew. It yeah. was not a crew that had worked together all year. It was one that was just kind of put together for that game. Yeah, we talked. Yeah. We hey, talked, hey. Mr. Oklahoma. We talked a lot all year this year about the lack of offensive holding calls in the Big Twelve Conference. There were a lot of offensive holding calls called last night. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And against us. Yes, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah, I tell you, but you know, Brett Bill, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try to hang in there with him, man. But he's gonna have to do a lot better, you know, a lot better. But I'm gonna give him a shot. But I'm not gonna stay too long on that. But I want to talk right. about, man, you know, this college basketball. I like to see, you know, different colleges playing different conferences. You know, I like to see that. Yeah, I love to see that. Right. Yeah, I, 
I agree. I love it when you get oh, when you get. Oh, we lost him. Yeah, I mean, for instance, uh, I used to live in Florida, right? And Miami is playing North Florida. You would never want to see that. I bet y'all even know where North Florida is. I, I, bet, it's, I bet it's in North Florida. <laughs> Probably somewhere around exactly. North Florida. But for the state of Florida, <laughs> that's a big time game. It's in Jacksonville. They the Dolphins. I had no idea. Right. <laughs> but, no idea. But, but 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 people gonna show up and show out, and they gonna hope that they can upset Miami. That'll make if if for your four year time, and y'all know that y'all were number twelve yeah. when when y'all lost to uh, Michigan. Y'all were ranked number twelve. Yep. Anything you could get over Texas, that's a big time. That's a that's a a college memory that we'll have for the rest of our lives if they can beat them. Well, I think I think one of the things I've like loved most about college basketball started probably a, what a decade and a half ago or so was when uh, the I think the Big Twelve and SEC are the ones that started it, uh, and then the Big East and ACC did it. But they do these challenges yeah. during yeah. the season. I love yeah. those. Um, and and we've seen some great matchups. I. Uh, um, of course, Rick Barnes used to always like to schedule North Carolina. We played a home and home with North Carolina and Roy Williams teams a number of times. Uh, but to be able to go uh, to play Kentucky, uh, to you know, to play Florida, to play some of these teams from other conferences that you don't think of in in non conference scheduling. But then they throw these challenges together, made for TV. Mm -hmm. ESPN puts up some money to pay both teams right. to, to play them. Um, it, 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 it's really fun to see. And of course, this year we saw Texas uh, go up to Madison Square Garden and play uh, UConn, UConn. Who, who might once again be the best team in the country again Could this be. year. Could be. Um, lose a hard-fought game. Uh, and then in, the, in the, a challenge against Marquette, um, not play as well. Played no. played well for about 12, 14 minutes. Uh, and then really Marquette took over that game. But it's still good to, to get those tests early so that you know what you need to work on and get better at. I agree. You can, you can play these teams that you can beat by 50 mm -hmm. and you get a false sense of how good your team is going to be. Yep. Or like you say, play different conferences. You might take a, a loss here, a loss there. Mm -hmm. But you can better gauge on what you need to work on. That's right. So I definitely like the fact that they're doing that. Can I can can I get Albert? Can I get under his skin right quick? We can try. Let's let, let me see what you got. All right. So you 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 say that right? Uh huh. But then when I look back uh -oh. at some of the games that you played in 1993. God, that makes me feel old. Y'all took. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 93 94 season. Does that help if I bring you in the 94? But, okay, so y'all went out, y'all played TCU. Y'all put 111 on them boys. They only scored 78. What, what, what did you learn a game from that, Albert? That we should have scored 112. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned from that. Okay, how about this? Y'all played Oral Roberts. Y'all put 106 on the board on them. They didn't even score the 78 that y'all let TCU. They only scored 106 to 69. So do do you do y'all look at those games and do you say, man, Let's see what we can score on them. Honestly, I, I feel like that's the way that teams look at it. My, in my perspective, when we play a game like that, yeah, it doesn't matter who you're playing. Oh, you don't play down to your competition. You yeah. don't play up to your competition. Yeah, I think bad teams do that. Yep, we play at our level. Yes, you did. Either you rise up to the occasion and play with us. Or you get left behind by 30 or 40 points. And you have to remember the era that he played in was Tom Penders and the Run and Horns. Ah. Right. There, it, it was, it, yes, they played a number of 84 to 80 type games. Um, but the point of that offense was to pu push, push, push when you had the ball, uh, volume shoot, um, get the ball up and down the floor as quickly as you can. Right. Um, you know, get the other team tired uh, and that and the result of that sometimes was that you would have games when you were scoring 100 plus points yeah but you guys had a four game stretch where you guys put up 110 then 108 then 107 then 110 again a four game and that was also uh that was a in the middle of a win streak. Right, right, But y'all right. put 110 on Baylor, 108 on Texas Tech, 107 on Georgia, 110 on Houston. I mean, I, I, I wish I could have watched that ball. Now, we talk about Houston. I have to give a shout out to my first cousin, Jamal Shedd, uh -huh. who's a starting point guard at U of H right now. Oh. Okay. They're number three in the country. So they're going to come down and play us this year, and we'll play them. 
So I, I mess with him a little bit. So I'm gonna be kind of torn. I'm gonna be rooting. <laughs> I'm gonna be rooting for you, but I'm gonna be rooting for Texas. So I gotta give a shout out to Jamal. Hey, I'm just messing with your cousin, man. I wish nothing but the best for you down at U of H. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, going going back, just real quick tie-in before we get to the phones. Caller, we're going to get to you in just a second. But quick tie-in, uh, Marcus Sasser um, out of Houston, mm-hmm. plays for the Detroit Pistons. Of course, Marcus Sasser's uncle, Jason. Jason. You played against Jason. Played against Jason. Where did Gerald Ger- – he had a brother, Gerald, too, didn't he? Uh, Gerald Sasser, but he was younger. He was younger. I remember okay. I played against Jason. Okay. He was a stud. He was a really good player at Texas yes. Tech. Really good basketball player. Played in the NBA. All-American, and then played in the NBA as well. Yeah. So, uh, we got to get to the uh, phone, so let's jump back into the phones. Hey, caller, you there? Hey, guys. This is the queen from Texas. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hey, I was going to tell you all, y'all getting some top local athletes out of Austin. I was looking at one of Texas' old games, and I saw Sean Mitchell running. Oh, yeah. And I know Albert. Mm-hmm. How you doing? I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean from yeah. LBJ. Yep, we remember Sean. Very well. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Listen, uh, as much as I love Texas, but I think uh, that Pac-12, they got some good athletes. Sure, yes, yes, they do. They do. And we saw that last night, um, Arizona. Because to me, Oklahoma had them whooped down. But they came back, you know, in that uh, last of that third and fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. I said, Mr. Oklahoma going to have a fit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. But uh, I think Washington, I'm going to take Washington over Texas. I love Texas. Oh, Ooh, no. Wow. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You know what? They, I, I can respect are, that. You know uh-huh. What? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say um, Michigan, Washington, because uh Michigan got a son of a gun too over Alabama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's the way I'm be, going. That these set up to be two really good football games, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Queen, when we oh, get, yeah. when we dive into this, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out on your side because I I don't think these two Longhorns right here are, are gonna give a fair shake. So I'm gonna defend your point for Washington. You just watch my smoke later. (laughs) Okay. And then attend attend the funeral when they gore me to death. But, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you, though. This this Husky is going to nip at their heels. The game, the competition this year has been so great. It has been a great pastime for me Uh, as I watch sports, you know, in my time. that's, That's really my greatest pastime. And I said, wow, I got a, uh, a lot of games coming up here. I've been watching all those bowl games and um, looking at NBA in between. You know, James is the greatest player, NBA player ever lived. I always say that. They uh, took down the Hornets. I haven't seen them beat some great teams yet this year, but they still in there. Yep, that's right. That's right. So, um, let me see who else. Oh, in the NFL, too. I'm going to jump ahead of y'all if you guys don't mind. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) In the NFL, it is just spectacular this year. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, let me see. I love the Baltimore Ravens now. When I saw that game against the 49ers, I did not know they had a defense like that. Yeah, the, you're talking about the Forty Niners. Yes, that's that. The Baltimore Ravens. Oh, the Ravens. Defense. Oh Let's yeah. Oh yes, ma'am. Oh yeah. They are they are one of the leaders in points allowed. They've been doing that all year. You cannot score on them, and but with that, they're the type of team that when they're in the lead, they stay in the lead. They, they have a great run game, yeah. and they just they just lengthen it out. They're not trying to run up the score on you. They're just trying to run out that clock and just humiliate you. Just keep shoving that ball down your throat. But yeah, they have one of the best 
defenses as far as points scored in the league. I'm glad. I, I'm glad. Do you think their quarterback now is back in the MVP conversation? Are you familiar with him, Lamar Jackson? Uh, yes, I've been watching him. Um, I think he's good, but uh, oh, there's a but. You know they were putting Purdy up there, and I was listening to Stephen A. On his program that was making them bring uh, Lamar Jackson into the mix. And I, I said, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he's pretty good. He's always been good. But uh, he really has to prove himself to me. If he, you know, I'm looking at him to be in the uh, NFL championship, actually. Okay. Yeah, but, but defense wins. And they are, I looked it up. So when it comes to turnovers, they are tied for first in the league. They're they're the leaders. Uh, I told you about the points scored. They're not the best in the league, but they're number four. And then also in in, in all the major defensive categories, they're top five. Mm -hmm. So when you have a great defense like that. that, They uh, defense, but uh, like you say, them turnovers, you know, he does the he used to do a lot of turnovers, I know. I don't know who is a great quarterback. To me, they all on the average. Joyce, Allen, Purdy, huh? Jackson, and uh, okay. who, who is the uh, 49ers? I forgot his You name. said it. You said Purdy. it. Purdy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Purdy. That's right. He's the 49ers. But they all on the average. To me, I don't see a grand one like Cobb. Uh, uh, Tom Brady. Oh, well, yeah. Well, Tom Brady's a class by that, that, so. that's yeah. Brady. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. if, that's, if that's who you're comparing everybody <laughs> to, then you, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry you're so disappointed. We all are. All we right, Queen, back. Queen, you got anything else for us? But I like the Ravens defense. Uh, you know, of all, I, I love that defense. Okay. All right. You got anything else for us? Let me see. No, that's it. All right. But I, like I say, my main point is loving Texas, but going with Washington and Michigan. All right. You got your picks in. We Y'all appreciate it. have a it. happy new year. You too. Happy you new too. year to you as you well. Too. Always good to hear from you. All right. So, and um, Jay, I, I believe, do we need to go ahead and get to a break? Then let's go ahead and do that. We, uh, coming off that call, let's get to a break. Come back on the other side. NFL college football talk in the second hour of the show right here on the fans view kazi 88.7 on the fans view kazi 88.7 travis kent douglas washington jay hunt on the board our special guest today albert burdett Along with his wife Stephanie, we appreciate Stephanie in here as well. She's off. She's off air, but we wanted. To, we appreciate that she is here representing her Detroit Lions over there, pulling strings too. Oh, man! Yeah, allowing yeah, this yeah. Th- this gentleman. He could he he. That's like his self. That's his that's his driving car. His autonomous driving car. You're right. You're he, right. He could just sit and read the newspaper. She she got stuff moving over there. That's my better half over there. My better half. Albert, Albert, we appreciate you coming in today, um, helping us fill in since Corey Mose decided to go like to New Orleans and party and stuff like that. So we appreciate you coming in and helping us out today. I appreciate you guys having me again. I. You hear it all the time when people come on shows like this and they say they had a great time and they, they appreciate the gratitude and all of that. I do truly mean that, having well, me on. Yeah. Uh, definitely, when you guys want me to ha- come on again, fill in, whatever, whatever. Perfect. Give me a call. Hey, I guarantee you as we get into January, mm-hmm. February, heading into March Madness, you're going to be, or you'll be on the list. You're going to be, well, as often as you want to talk about it, we'll be ready to talk about it for sure. Because we, well, especially when we get to mid-February and past, oh yeah, there's going to be a regular college basketball segment on this show for sure. So yeah, I would love to be a part of that. Yep. I Sounds really good. Would. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a great rest of your morning, great rest of the show, and uh, have, I'm ready to come back whenever. Big man, yeah. you, you know when you leave, I'm sliding over to play the five and the four, right? I'm, I'm, the, I'm the big man when you go. <laughs> hey, no, you the big man here. I'm just filling in. I'm, I, I'm just coming off the bench right I'm now. Going over there. Longhorn legend Albert Burdett, we appreciate you coming in, Albert. Thank hey, you very appreciate much. it. Hey, hook him. Hook him. All right. Good one, sir.
All right, so Douglas, we wanted to talk um, some NFL. Yeah. Uh, we got playoff crunch going in, um, and we want to uh, make sure. And, and last night, man, the team, the, I tell you what, the Cleveland Browns won. <laughs> um, the, no franchise has been made more fun of over the last couple of decades than the Cleveland Browns. Let's yes. Just, um, and they have struggled at the quarterback position. They've rolled through so many of them. Um, to see a guy like Joe Flacco, who is a, is a world champion, yes, but probably was always thought of along the Trent Dilfer line yeah. of a bus driving game world manager, cha- game manager, stay out of the way guy. He's helping them win football games. Did, did we were <laughs> were rumors about his demise? greatly over exaggerated. Yeah. I feel like you pull a guy off the couch and then in this game against that vaunted Jets defense, That's right. he still goes out and throws for 300 yards. Yeah, look, look, we can say all we want about playing the Jets, right? But the Jets on the defensive side of the ball are a legit football team. Yes, they're on their eighth starting quarterback or whatever it is at this point in the season on offense. But that defense is legit. And to to do what he did against them last night, um, and, and like you say, off the couch, off the scrap heap, however you want to call him of where he is right now, um, he looks to be exactly what that franchise needed at this time. They, they're on a four-game win streak. And then coming into the year, if you would have told me, that even with Deshaun Watson, I thought the Jaguars were going to be amazing. Uh, I didn't know we were going to get with the Bears, so I'll give you that. The Texans, this is a Texans team that I thought was, was going to have the MVP. Mm-hmm. And then the, that Jets defense put up almost 40 points on them. And then now they play Browning and, and the Bengals, which means, are you here to tell me that he could take a 12-5 and five team into the playoffs? Playoffs? <laughs> you know, you know what? What is even a crazier thought um, is they now are one game back in the win column. Yes, because Baltimore still has a game to play this weekend, but Baltimore is hosting Miami. I, yeah. Do Do I expect Miami to necessarily go in there and win? No. But this is a Miami team that is clearly game for a fight, and it wouldn't shock anyone if they went into Baltimore and were able to pull out a win. Uh, Uh, The the December swoon that the Dolphins do when they come to cold climates, it's cold over in D.C. right now. Does that sway you any? No. Look, I'm not expecting it to happen. Okay. I'm not expecting it to happen. Yeah. Um, But I, I also... With, with the amount of skill players, and Jalen Waddle being out with a high ankle sprain hurts a little bit there. I, I hate um, that. But but with the type of skill players Miami has, um, you know, I, I give them a puncher's chance in pretty much any game they play. Oh, they still got the, the fastest That's, running backs in the game. Ex- exactly. <laughs> a, a chain is, is going to be there. Mostert's going to be there. Yeah. Any other year, Mostert, we'd be saying Mostert for MVP. That's right. But unfortunately, Christian McCaffrey is just out of this world right. and was healthy. To be able to play all year. That's that's uh, that's so hard for Mostert. Because any other year, Mostert would get more shine than he's getting. But McCaffrey had to stay healthy. So it really and un- also unfortunately, Tua has two amazing wide receivers that he's gonna he's throwing the ball to. You score so quick, uh-huh. you don't even get to run the ball and get even more chances to Mostert. So uh Raheem Mostert, uh, hopefully the check is in the mail. Uh, I'm trying my best <laughs> to have a little empathy for you, bro. But um, Joe Flacco and that team, I am shocked. Now now what happens? Do you start shopping Deshaun Watson? Because there's really no need for him in that contract well, now. I, you know, I mean, you can go I, you, I guess you can try and shop him. Um, you signed him to... An awful contract. You did. And you've kind of pinned yourself in because I don't think anybody out there is going to take that contract. I think there are some teams that probably would would 
definitely want to take a shot at Deshaun Watson because they've got nothing else going on. Atlanta. Atlanta's one. Yeah. Um, Isn't he from Atlanta? Do, do, do you remember that? I want to say he's from it. Like he grew up. He in may Atlanta. be. I don't. I don't remember. But okay. uh, um, that you know, there there are teams out there who would certainly want a shot at Deshaun Watson. Yes. Um, the you know, but I think most of those teams would just be just content to sit around and see if he gets cut. Yeah. And, and if he gets cut, then they can go out and try to figure out if they can put something together for him. Uh, I just don't know that somebody's going to give up. Uh, the, the the problem with trading for him is you're not going to have to give up a whole lot in a trade. Yeah. But what you are going to have to do is pay that salary. And so you got to fit him under the salary cap. Now, somebody like Atlanta probably does have room under the cap. I mean, some of their best players are still under rookie contracts. And this is not the Joe Flacco coming off of the Super Bowl betting on himself, yeah. commanding that amazing contract that he got. So going into next year, hopefully you keep Joe and you draft. Right. You draft. There, there's somebody, I mean, with this record, I mean, they're, they're not going to get a lottery pick, but I, I don't know their, their picks if they inherited something, if they had something. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you go get a, a nice young guy, put him behind him, and, and just see what you have going forward. You got Amari Cooper, who looks great. You, you got... Um, you well, they're, they're gonna they're probably should go look for another running back mm-hmm. because um, uh, the knee he, he had that gruesome knee injury. What what's their quarterback? Chubb. Chubb. Nick, uh, yeah. yeah, Chubb's not. Uh, I, I hope Chubb never comes back. I I would like for him to just ride off into the sunset. So go get you a nice running back as well. King Henry is, it might be on the on the on the on the run, and he's from this conference, so he would love to to stick it to his whole team. Like I I think there's some options for them, but you got to get out from under that contract so you can have some freed up money. Was was where I was going to go for them. Yeah. So I, the, the the question that I have when when, we're, when related to the AFC, and then we'll get to a call real quick. Yeah. Is Several weeks ago, when Kansas City kind of started this wobble that they've been on for the for the past six weeks, yeah, um, I, I said that I'm not sure that Kansas City is still necessarily in the top four. Yeah, and you and Corey both rightly said, "Well, name the other four teams if they're not <laughs> in the top four. Yeah, and and you were right. You know, at the time I went back and really looked at, it and I said, "Well, there's no way that Kansas City's not in the top four. Yes, right. Look at it today, and tell me the Ravens. I believe the Ravens are the best team in the AFC right now. Okay. Yeah. Um. After that, just put in the mix the Dolphins, the Browns, the Bills, and the Jaguars. Do you? Playoff Pat Mahomes may, is probably going to have something to say about what, where they go, right? Playoff Pat Mahomes is a bad dude. Yeah. But do you look at the Chiefs, and can you tell me that definitively – Kansas City can go out and beat any one of the top five or six teams in the AFC right now today. No confidence at all. And when you're when your guy Kadarius Tony, mm-hmm. who's, who is the guy, with it, with, that was the expectation he's going to be the number one guy. Right. He can't even stay healthy when when things are rolling good. So yep. yeah, I have I have no confidence in there. Yep. Sorry, caller. Uh, hopefully you'll call back in. Uh, Travis, I, the only thing is, I, when you started counting, sure. in my mind, I was saying, don't say the Bills, don't say the Bills, don't I, say the Bills. Is I, that wrong? I get it. No, you, you're, you're, you're probably right to say, don't say the Bills. Um, you, you know, I, so, so my, my point in including the Bills probably stems from me being a Cowboys fan, right? I saw what the Bills <laughs> did to the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... and uh, so, so I'm probably overvaluing that victory for the Bills a little bit in the grand scheme of things. Like they were able to put together a running game where they they could uh, they could throw for less than 100 yards, yeah. dominate a run game and win. And I, you know, that was a bad weather, a cold weather, rain, um, a Dallas team that um, Hankins was out in the middle. And they were able to just that that's kind. It, I guess an anomaly is probably the best because I don't see any other team out there that right now you could line up and throw for less than 100 yards and, and just go 300 yards rushing and win a game. Um, yeah. I, we, 
So they've won three in a row. Yes, they have. We can't count them out. We, right. we know what talent they have on that team. Right. Um, they have the – I looked at their defense. I always like to say defense wins championship. That's not my – it's not my line, but I do like to, to live off of it because I do agree with mm-hmm. it. Uh, in the in the AFC, they have the third best points allowed. There's mm-hmm. only two other teams that have allowed less points than them. That's, that, that's another sign of a good defense. Mm-hmm. Leaves you in the game. We know that Josh ain't afraid if he needs to get in the shootout in the playoffs – to do it and he's got to win it we know that at least we think he'll stay healthy and he'll make it uh if he's healthy right now right. three game win streak this new uh offensive coordinator and the confidence that the team has they're deadly yes but i i, I just don't want them to do what they have done in every year i'm not a Bulls fan everyone knows that uh well they may not even know what fan <laughs> i am but i just i don't want them to do it to me again I don't want to see Super Josh. I don't want to get all caught up on digs. I like what the way Cook is running right mm-hmm. now. Great job to him when they let Singletary go. I was like, what are you guys doing? I just, I, I, I don't see them winning the Super Bowl. I just, I just don't feel confident. I don't, I don't either. But um, I, I, I think I, I think I have to at this point um, ad, admit that that taking taking the OC job away from Ken Dorsey and putting Joe Brady in place. Joe Brady's got something. He does. And and we can talk all we want about what he did with Joe Burrow at LSU. Um, and then he jumps from LSU into Carolina, and that was just a train wreck of a situation and all that. Yeah. So, Joe Brady's got something. Yeah. And, and he – it certainly seems like he and Josh are on the same page yes. right now. Yeah, yeah, it does. And you can't really deny that. And if and if this is not an anomaly, if this is something real, then they're going to be they're going to tough out. Yes, they are. So you don't want to deal with that defense. And then again, before you know it, with with those, with 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 Gabe, um, with uh, with Diggs, with mm-hmm. those wide receivers and uh, their their tight end. Uh-huh. <laughs> With that run game, they could you could be down fourteen to zip on this team, right. and that's the thing. They're a good enough team where they could just run from the lead and just kill you. And their defense, I mean, they they lost Von Miller, but their defense isn't their their line defensive line is not bad. So when they get to pin their ears back and just chase these quarterbacks that have to throw to get back into the game, mm-hmm. I'm worried. And again, not not that their record's good enough, but a cold weather team. They're not afraid to go somewhere sure. on the road in the playoffs and play. Like, you lose all of that. Right. You lose all of that. Oh, home field advantage, the cold weather. So, I want to do that. Hey, before we go, though, mm-hmm. are we going to – because we, we did promise a caller. We did say we were going to talk. Just briefly, we don't have to stay long, that, that Eagles – eking out over the Giants. We we, 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 we got to hit that, especially yeah, now that Jay yeah, Hunt is I, here. I, I think we do need to have an NFC East conversation here <sighs> about two teams – that three or four weeks ago, we clearly thought were two of the thro- top three teams in the NFC. Yeah. And now I look at both of them and go, are they still two of the top three teams in the NFC? Dallas, with the most recent win over Philadelphia, yeah. we thought that gave them a leg up. And now Dallas has played two good football teams back to back, Buffalo and Miami, and and lost. They'll play another good football team this week at home against Detroit. <sighs> but Philadelphia clearly their their fans especially have got to have serious doubts about where the mindset and the heart of this football team is right now. Yeah. Because they just don't look like the same team they've been over the last couple of years. I want to remind people, I like how you started this, Travis. We talking about the NFC East. Mm-hmm. Not not a good one. Not a good one. The NFC East. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See that, that little Philly reference <laughs> That's right. for you, that Iverson. Uh, the, you beating up on the Washington Commanders and the Giants. So you sitting at 4-1 and one in your division. That don't impress me. Eagles. Eagles fans. Um, away from home, you 5-3. and three. Mm-hmm. I want you to remember that. In the conference all, all together, you still have taken those three losses. Um, I there. What I'm worried about is they have given up 392 points. 
uh, sorry, they have scored 392. They've given up 366. They're, that's only a 26 point differential. Mm -hmm. That worries me. Th those are close games. Look at Minnesota last year. They won all those close games. Did we think they were a great team? No, no. but their record said said that they were. Right. That, but what happened in those games? That's where I'm at. You are supposed. Uh, Albert said it himself. Mm -hmm. Good teams play your brand of ball, not down to the teams. We we talk about Devito, Tyrod Taylor. Mm -hmm. That's the Giants team. They're dead. Yeah. And you eek by them, I'm worried here. I think Eagle fans should be shook. The only reason that the Eagle fans are breathing right now is because Dallas let them off the hook. Right. Because Dallas has lost two in a row. Yeah. That's the only reason why their head is above water. I am worried, and I do not, I'm saying this, this is not at Jay Hunt, because I really do love Jay Hunt, but I love to pick on him. He's an amazing guy. <laughs> but for the conversation, they are not. I'm, I'm turning this to, to, what, to what you you went to. Mm -hmm. In the NFC, they are not one of my top three teams. And that's and so that's what I want to transition real quick next to is let's look at the NFC right I now. I was hoping we, you'd we say that. We just did this on the AFC side a little bit. Let's do it on the so NFC side now. That's something that's going to make you say, <gasps> Exactly. I, so clearly, San Francisco, I'm assuming we both still believe, is yes. the best team in the NFC. I believe. Travis, I believe. So... Let's let's not mention the Eagles and Cowboys yet. Let's start mentioning the other yes, teams. Yes, sir. The Detroit Lions. I believe Travis. I believe I was on them. I wish we could go back and get the get those tapes from early in the season. I'm a fan. I believe they got it going. Who do you stop? Gibbs, Montgomery, right? Uh, and then that 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 wide receiver by committee. No disrespect to Amon St. Ra, but. And then Laporta, right? Um, they, what a team! What offensive weapons! And can we finally put some spec on Jared Goff's name? What a great team! The Dan Campbell biting the kneecaps guy. He's done a great job. I like. I'm a fan. Yeah. I, and they get to play indoors. I, I agree. <laughs> and then I'm going to throw out as the next best team. A team that's on the rise right now, playing uh -oh. their best football, uh -oh. and happens to be the quarterback involved in the trade that got Jared Goff to Detroit, Matt Stafford and the uh -oh. L.A. Rams, and the way they've looked over the last couple of weeks. I didn't expect you to say this. I know where you're going. I think right now, uh -huh. today... I believe they are the third best team in the NFC. That was my team where I thought you were going to say, <gasps> and I'm not doing it to be a homer. Mm -hmm. I don't want these fans. I know where you're going. You're talking about Austin's own Baker Mayfield yeah, and them Tampa Bay Bucks. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah that, that's the they're other. In, they're in my top three. If okay. I got to do a top three, okay. they're in it. And that's I, I think right now in the discussion between Tampa Bay and L.A. Rams, I give the edge to the Rams' defense and a slight edge for Stafford over Baker Mayfield. But there's no doubt Tampa Bay right now, if they if if my Cowboys lined up against Tampa Bay on a neutral field or if Tampa Bay was lining up against Philadelphia on a neutral field and you asked me to pick who I thought would win, I would probably choose Tampa Bay. You know why I want people to I'm, I'm in agreement with you about the Rams. Um, I want people to respect them. Mm -hmm. That is the that NFC West is the only division in the NFC that has only one seller dweller, and that's Arizona. Yes. And we know Arizona smacked around a couple. T you know, of those three wins, the three of them were shocks. Um, when you when you think of it like that. They're not padding their stats like Eagles fans no. smacking around the, the, the Giants and the Commanders. They're not padding their stats um, like, like like Tampa Bay that's smacking around the Panthers. So when you when you think of it like that, you got to respect who they're fighting. They're in the same division with the Niners. That's hard. And and the upstart Seattle Seahawks. Well, I don't know what we got with Geno. Well, let's let's let, let's talk about why that's why that division is so difficult. So that Seattle Seahawks team we're talking about, that's led by now Geno Smith, and oh by the way, when he's injured, um, the, you know, going to a backup quarterback when they play in Philadelphia, uh, that's a team that's 
above 500. Yes. In a division where, you know, they're playing against the Rams and 49ers. <laughs> yeah. And their game week in and week out. They're the Cowboys. They played the Cowboys tough. They 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 get a win over the Eagles. They're you know, they are a team that if they are the third best team in your conference, you're, in your division, you're 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 in a really good division. So shout out to Washington. I know I know we're gonna get to the Longhorns in Washington, but I'm glad you went there because I I I, I used to have a lot of friends and uh, family up in Seattle. So those friends are still there. Uh, spoiler alert, guys, you're no longer my friends. <laughs> but so they started off the season. They lost to the Rams. They lost to the Bengals, and that was when Joe Burrow was still there, and they only lost by four. They lost to the Ravens. They got blown out, but, I mean, come on. It's the Ravens. We know how good they are now. Um, when you when you look at that schedule, they back-to-back, -back, they had to play the Rams, then the Niners, again, two amazing teams, and the Cowboys, who they only lost to by six. That was that 41-35, and you remember I came in that week, and I was like, hey, they put up 35 points, I think – Y'all got to y'all got to recognize game there. And then they came right out of that loss to the Cowboys and had to play the Niners again. If you if you and I know we I'm playing the if game, but for for an 8 and 17, if you take out the Rams, if you take out the Niners, if you just look at who their losses are, they're one of the best teams. And we don't know where they're going to end up with this record if they get this next win and they're 9 and 7. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Nine and seven, ten and seven. I don't know where they're going to end up. But I, it's a good team, and I don't look down on Seattle. It's right. just you, you can only play who's in your division, and you, it sucks. You, you you can, and and that's one of the reasons that if you if you look right now at the playoff picture on the NFC side, yeah, obviously four teams have clinched. Yeah, right. So we've got our three um, division winners in the West, the East. And the North, yeah, um, which right right now is 49ers, Eagles, Lions. 49ers and Lions have won their division. Um, either Dallas or Philly will end up winning the East, and both of them have clinched a playoff spot. Yeah, uh, and the other one will be in the wild card. So there's four of your spots. There's three spots left. It appears the Buccaneers are going to eventually clinch the South, probably with a win this week. I would yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, and so, because I think the Saints are, yeah, the Saints are under five. I guess this, I guess a loss by the Buccaneers and a win by the Saints. They, yeah, but they, they, they don't, they don't control their destiny. They need so much to happen. There's got to be a bunch of car crashes ahead of them. Exactly. So if the Buccaneers are going to win the South, yeah, that's so. Now you have two playoff spots left. Yep. Right now, those two wild card spots are the Rams and the Seahawks. Yeah. Uh, so you now the Rams and 49ers are going to play in the final week of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're you're not worried about Minnesota. Um. Or, or Green Bay. I I just went to to get your takes on them. Are you worried about them getting those last two? It. Oh. Okay. So I tell you what. Let's do. Let's go to a break. Okay. Let's come back. We can finish up our NFL talk before we head into college football okay. playoff talk. All right. Okay. So, Jay, let's get to a break. We'll come back on the other side right here on the Fans View, KAZI 88.7. And we're back on the Fans View, KAZI 88.7. Travis Kent, Douglas Washington, Jay Hunt on the board. Uh, and we were talking the NFL. Yes, sir. And you were posing a question to me, yeah. Douglas. Yeah, I answered a question with a question, but you were just trying to gauge for me who the two final teams were that were going to get in. And I, I, I apologize, everyone. We had to go to the break there. I should have looked up. I didn't want to give the quick answer because, Travis, I just, before I answer that, yes. we didn't cover it. And I want to give them a little love. I'm, I'm sure we got some some cheese heads that live here in Austin. And we may have some green, uh, some, some green, some purple eaters, some, some Minnesota Vikings fans. And I just wanted to know, are we going to give them a little respect there because I, I think those two teams are very spunky, and I would actually I know because you mentioned New Orleans, uh -huh. and I felt like yes. you wanted me to to give you something on New Orleans, but I I would rather give you more on those two. I I feel like Green Bay is my number one of those two, okay. and I think that they may have more of a chance than New Orleans. So, when we talk about those last two playoff positions, yes, sir. 
And right now, I'm looking at it thinking the NFC West, I believe, has the two better teams in the Rams and and the and the Seahawks. Yes. But it also comes down to schedules and who's playing whom. Mm-hmm. Right now, um, in the, they're in a so they're in an inferior position because they're both sitting at seven and eight yes. on the season. Yes, is Green Bay and Minnesota, and they play on Sunday. Yeah. So one of those teams is going to be two games under five hundred, and the other one will move to five hundred. So that so whichever team loses is eliminated. Then I have that answer. Minnesota's already lost two in a row. Uh, I think they're sinking. I think they're okay with that because I know they got to move forward. Uh, they once again they're going to start their fourth new quarterback yeah. this this week yeah. at 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 the quarterback position since losing Kirk Cousins. Okay, um, they just can't. So I I don't see Minnesota beating Green Bay. Agreed. Okay. So so then the question becomes: So in the final week of the season. Do, you, do we think that um, that Green Bay, who plays Chicago, can get a win there, get to one game above 500, and is that enough to take away uh, one of the spots? Um, and I, I'm 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 frantically trying to pull up the Seahawks schedule yeah. right now. Well, what I, I so I'll answer it. I'll filibuster to give you an opportunity okay. for that. Um, Yes, Green Bay will beat Chicago. Why? Chicago is not going to play Justin Fields. He, they're going to look to trade him in the offseason, and you do not want him to get hurt in this last game of the season. Go ahead and put the, the, the what, what was the young man that played behind him? The, 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 the great story. He played, he played FCS. Uh, his dad is the arm wrestler. Yeah. That kid. So yes, they're, they're yes. going to put him in, and let's just let – Justin Fields hold a clipboard. What do we gain? That one game isn't going to sway you anyway on Justin Fields. You're six and nine, so th- it, it doesn't do anything for you. Uh, so I think that they are going to not have him in the game, which only bodes well for the chances of Green Bay getting that other win. So I think Green Bay is going to finish nine and eight. So Seattle, um, because I do know the Rams play the Niners on the final week of the season. So I I don't know who they play this week, but I know they play the Niners on the final week of the season. Um, And we don't know the Niners could very well be in bench everyone mode and not care. Um, Or they could play it straight up and, you know, make it it a battle and and, and see who wins that game. So I'm going to look at the Seahawks schedule. Okay. And the Seahawks who are right now sitting at a game above 500 tied with the Rams, correct? That's yes. where let – me, yes. d- let me double – They're both eight and seven. Yes, they're both eight and seven. Okay. Both have won two in a row. Correct. And the Seahawks um, play this Sunday, play the Steelers at home, and then play at Arizona to finish the season. Hey, I'm not afraid of that. If, if I'm rooting for – Seattle, I'm not afraid of that, but yeah, man, that just that makes that that, that would make them nine and seven, or sorry, that'd make them ten and seven, and uh, at the by the end of the year with both wins, uh, yeah, eesh. okay, so wow, that, and, a double and, digit and, team, yeah, and that's that's the only reason when I say, um, it, it can the can the uh, NFC Central, no, that's the NFC North. The NFC North, yep. get a, can they get another team into the playoffs? Yeah. I think it's an uphill battle for them, yeah. mainly for that reason. Yeah. The Rams, so, and I, let's see, hold on. No, well done, sir. You have already, I'm, I'm kicking in the retro Rockets. I'm backpedaling away from Green Bay. The Rams because, are at the Giants this week. Yeah. Oh, in that case, let me check my phone. They, they could they could start me at quarterback <laughs> just to keep everybody healthy and still be. Oh, sorry, there's an Eagles fan in the room, <laughs> and uh, they don't realize and how how easy there is a glare coming from that, that side Giants of the room right now. Giants team is. I mean, I could go out there with my flag football glory days <laughs> and smack around them with that rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Cut the mic. That's right. <laughs> hey, my mouth gets me into a lot of trouble. So you know what? You, I, I'm hitting the retro rockets. It, it, it hey, any give, even get a Sunday. It's a game of inches. That one loss 
has taken them out of it. Green Bay, the fact that they already have that eighth loss, shoots them in the foot. Okay, I'm off of them. I, I, don't, I don't think, with the way I see the other yeah. teams, oh yeah, I think NFC North is only going to have Detroit in. I, I, I think the best shot for Green Bay getting in um, probably lies with um, Seattle, with the Steelers somehow going up there and Tomlin just getting those guys to fight like heck uh, and get a victory on the road against Seattle. And then I, I don't know how Arizona would somehow beat Seattle, but that that's <laughs> that's the best path because I I do not see how the Rams would ever lose to the Giants, um, even even at the the way the Rams offense is playing right now. Yeah, I I have a hard time believing that even on the road, unless it's just the sloppiest game like that Buffalo Cowboys game or something like, to that effect. Um, even with them then having to play the 49ers in the final game of the season. Yeah. Uh, a vict- you know, see, Seattle and L.A. both win this week. Yeah. It likely clinches both uh, wild card spots for them. I don't know how, when we look back, 28-16, to 16, the Cowboys lost to Arizona yeah. uh, earlier this, this week, this year. But to what I said earlier, Kyler Murray, mm-hmm. I think he's going to be offered up. I, I know there's a lot of teams that would take him. I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking he'd be a great fit in, in Washington. I'm thinking he'd be a, a, a great fit down in Atlanta. I know I mentioned some other people, mm-hmm. but uh, I think where a fan base would, would want him and be galvanized by him. So I don't think they'll play him last game of the season. So another reason for them to be a pushover. Sure. Um, McBride is playing great as a tight end, but that's really all I really worry about over there. I'm not worried about Hopkins. No. Um, nah. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be easy. Um, what I will just say mm-hmm. on this final, because sure. you, you talked me off of Green Bay, I just want to go back to one last little item. Tampa Bay, are you if if they clinch and get in, they're on this four game win streak. Mm-hmm. Is it because of their division? Is it they're three and one in the in the division? You're 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 smacking around Atlanta with their crappy quarterback situation. New Orleans, there's a reason Carr got got shipped out of Vegas. Jameis Winston was in there. Dude, it's a great story. We like our our man Baker Mayfield, but I just want to look down the road. I can't take it from them if they clinch. But do we expect them to make any noise in the playoffs, especially against these NFC teams? Because the more we talk about the the top NFC teams. The, the I just I don't know. Playoff is different. That's different ball. It it is, and I, I think my short answer to that would be I still wouldn't expect them to really make a playoff push. Could yeah. they win a wild card round game? I'd have to see who the matchup was with. But yeah, yeah I I think wild card round is one thing, but then round two, um, they. They're playing. They're playing good football. But I think if they were in the if they were in the NFC North, or in I really really put them in any of the other ones, and not have the rest of their conference to kind of beat up on because it's just a down. It, look, it's down this year. That's, yeah. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, it just happens to be another time when the NFC South is down again. Yeah. Um, and so I just they they've. They're not. They're not a terrible football team. They've got. They've got some good pieces in oh, place. Yeah, they do. They can still throw the ball down the field. They can still put up points. Um, I don't think they have enough on the defensive side of the ball to really consider themselves uh, play some sort of playoff push team. Yeah. It. B- before we head over to college, uh, I, I, what I'll say is this off season, mm. I'm looking for a lot of amazing opportunities for some of these quarterbacks to be moved. Um, Caleb Williams is coming. And remember, he said, I don't want to go to a crappy franchise. Yeah. And because of that, there could be a move here. We could see some three-team three, three, some three team, uh, opportunities where we know he doesn't want to go to you. We're just having a down year. So maybe we can, we can massage some things. So I'm very curious. Uh, there's new ownership over at the Commanders. Uh, we... Dallas, I mean Dallas, Giants, 
what y'all gonna do? Because right. that that contract with Daniel Jones does not look good. Right. So could you bring in a Kyler Murray? Could you maybe get somebody coming out of college? I, I think because we I don't think anyone thinks Devito is the future. No. There, there's so much turnover quarterback wise that. Uh, I can't wait for the offseason to see how it's going to, because we're going to look very different, I believe, going into next year. The Giants, the Browns, and the Cardinals, I think, are the three of the most interesting quarterback situations to watch next year. Yeah. Because I think they're the three franchises with the three worst quarterback contracts. Now, I'm not completely writing Deshaun Watson off as being able to resurrect his career. I don't think there's much there with Daniel Jones. I don't think there's a ceiling. I, nobody. I have not heard any pundit out there, any person that I like, that I that I listen to, that I respect, tell me that he has a ceiling that is Josh Allen like. Or so I just don't see much there. Kyler Murray. Boy, I just watch him, and I had. If you, if you ask me who can resurrect their career, I still think it's Deshaun Watson. I'm not counting Kyler completely out, but I just don't see it myself. So Kyler didn't have a run game. And so it was easy to to drop back in coverage when he finally came back. Who's afraid of James Conner? Right. right. Nobody. So if, well, he, if he had talent. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. <laughs> if he had talent. Uh, I, 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 I said we were going to get off mm -hmm. uh, so we can get to that bowl, but uh, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson mm -hmm. throws a really good deep ball, and oh. those wins up there okay. at MetLife Stadium where the Giants play, if you throw a good tight spiral, you could survive. And if he doesn't go to the Giants, maybe he goes to the Commanders. He's from Virginia. Okay. So he's he could be on the move, too. So Sean Payton benching Russell Wilson this week, is that a clear sign that they will somehow get rid of him one way or another? Yes, sir. Either cut or trade or whatever it takes. But do you, do you think he is gone from Denver at this point? He will not be back. I am as sure as a Giants team that wishes they had six more minutes to play against the Eagles. Okay. That's how sure I am yeah. that if I just had them extra six minutes, we could have beat them Eagles. But that's a, <laughs> that's for another conversation <laughs> on another day. All right. So um, let's move into college football playoff. we Woo! got two games to talk about. Let's start with the Rose Bowl. Let's start out west. Okay. Alabama and Michigan, two contrasting styles. <sighs> Two coaches who I'm not sure are very fond of each other. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that angle. Yeah. Whoa. Um, Wait, that handshake after the game, no matter how it turns out. Right. There's going to be a brawl. Um, so this is obviously Alabama, whether it's the BCS era or the CFP era, has been a regular for the past. Um, well, the year they beat Texas in 2010 – yeah. Um, from that point on, they have been a regular fixture in the national championship race. Okay. Yeah. So we're in year 14 now, 13, 14 of, of them being a part of the national championship race year in and year out. So they're, they're a fixture. Michigan now, under the Harbaugh recreation of them, is in um, their third straight CFP. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's done a great job. I mean, he 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 he's done what they brought him there to do. He brought eyes to the program cuz you know, Ohio State was smacking him around for a while there. And no one had any respect for for Michigan. But I I just I wonder Travis, what do we do with Harbaugh if he even stays at win or lose? If he wins, can he take that and jump into the NFL? And if he loses, it, does he realize, man? I just didn't want to quit on y'all, but now that the season is over, I'm done. I'm going to the. I'm going back to the NFL because y'all appreciate me after what I'm doing for college football. And he's going to leave. So, uh, that, that I know that has no bearing on the game necessarily. Um, and he's not. It's not like he's not going to prepare or anything. Right. Uh, but I, I think there's going to be some conversations about where, where he goes after. I, I I agree with you. I I I think I was taken aback a little bit this week because I hadn't really thought about it um but the amount of rumor mill comments that i heard from pundits on the various networks about harbaugh going back to the nfl kind of kind of startled me a little bit yeah um but it may 
when you stop and think about it, he's he's going through a season where he was suspended twice yes. for infractions yep. in NCAA. And so is it crazy to think that he's just going to say, as much as I love Michigan and as much as I want to be the reincarnation of Bo Schimbeckler, I don't want to be hamstrung by these rules. I want to go back to the NFL where I can get away with a lot more and just do whatever I want to do. And it empowers his enemies. Ohio State uses that. Hey, guys, I know you're. it's between us and Michigan or Penn State. I know you want to go to one of us three schools. But here's what I can tell you. At least our coaches will be there game in and game out for you mm-hmm. without suspensions. Right. I, mean, I think you can use that. So I, I haven't looked, but I'd like to see what that recruiting class is looking like. I will guarantee you it's a down year for them. I, I I, I am that confident it's a down year for them, even though they have, they're have they in the Final Four, just based off of if I was an enemy, I would be leading all with that. Uh, your boy ain't even going to be there for you when, it get, mm-hmm. when, the, when the going gets rough. He'll probably be suspended. So I think that's there. Uh, this is a hard defense. This is the number one uh, points against defense, scoring defense in all of college football. Mm-hmm. Because of that... We have Alabama, the Crimson Tide fans. We have their attention. Mm-hmm. I, you, you, you just can't gloss over them. They played some tight games, but Michigan has attitude, and that is why I think Michigan is going to hang in that game and give us a good game. Um, I don't think Michigan's going to win it though. I don't see them winning it. I really don't. Okay, so I'm leaning Alabama myself. Oh. But here's here's what I want to here's what I am very interested in seeing because I think I hear a lot like I said the talking heads talking about Blake Corum and this Michigan running game and they make it seem like Michigan only throws the ball twelve times a game and they run it fifty four times a game <laughs> yeah and that's simply not the case. No. I don't think people are giving McCarthy enough um, respect in this game as a quarterback. He, when they are a, they are an old school, traditional pro style offense. Um, And we're just not used to seeing that. And I think they would rather run the ball 35 times and throw it 25 times. A la the Dallas Cowboys of the mid nineties, right? Yes. I think certainly if you ask them a perfect world, that would be what they would tell you. Um, But I think when they throw the ball those 25 times, that they're pretty confident that McCarthy is going to go 21 of 25 for 264 and a touchdown. You know? And and I I think this Alabama defense is going to have a tough time with the balance of of this Michigan offense. Thank you. I, I'm glad you went there because that was going to be my point. You stole it, but I like we're on the same wavelength there. They have blown teams out this year, but yet they're not top 50 in rushing. They're not top. They're not top 50 in in in, in their passing offense. You don't have to be when you're when you're balanced. You're giving everybody a chance to mm-hmm. eat. We don't have to just lean on one way. We're multifaceted. We have blown these teams out in a wide variety of different ways. That is why I believe they're a great team to go up against. But I just think I just athleticism, talent, and then just what what I think is the deciding factor of Mr. Milrow. Mm-hmm. I I just I don't, I think that's what does them in. I. I think Alabama has more five stars than you, and I think those five stars will show up. I so uh, here, here's here's where here's where I think I, I lean in the end. Georgia and Alabama, yeah, they they win football games because you go in on first down and you're like, I probably won't be able to run the ball on the first down, so I better put it in the air. Mm-hmm. And then if it's an incomplete pass, you're in second and ten. Yeah, and then you have to make a decision. Okay, do I try to pick up three or four yards on second down by running the ball? And they stuff you on the run, and now you're in third and nine. Mm-hmm. Michigan, I think, can 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 be balanced. And then if they throw an incomplete pass on first down, I think there's a good chance they can get to third and five and third and six by running the ball yeah. on second down and be in a makeable third down situation. In the end, however... 
I think Jalen Milrow and the growth he's shown over the season, it, he's. I still think that people talk about him. He, he's made big strides as a passer. He still has a lot of holes in his passing game. But his legs in big games like this are usually backbreakers. Michigan hasn't played this type of talent. The, the, the closest talent they have was Ohio State, yeah. who's got five-star people, and they only beat them 30 to 24. Yeah. And and I don't think we think that Ohio State was better than Alabama. Right. So I, I will put another eight points on. So I'm going to give you 38 to 24 is the expectation. I think they may get 24 points, but that's about it. I think it's probably a two-touchdown uh, victory for Alabama over Michigan. I think I think Michigan is going to be able to take the air out of the ball. I think it's going to limit the possessions. I think each team may only touch the ball five or six times each half. Oh. And I'm looking at a 27-24 Alabama victory. Close. Well, I hope that because <laughs> I'm going to be watching and I would like to see that type of game. Um, okay. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for that. All right, Texas watched it. I'm going to let you drive this bus because, obviously, as a Texas fan, <laughs> you've heard me talk about Texas all year. Yeah. I'm going to let you drive the bus on this. So I want to start because I want all Longhorn fans to just, just hear me out. You're 12-1. and one, Nobody is disrespecting you. You're just playing an undefeated, a great team that's mm -hmm. beat Oregon twice. So just respect game. Those were nationally televised games. They all had us. I, I, I always tell Longhorn fans, listeners, y'all know, y'all listen. I like the drama. Well, hey, let me, spoiler alert, everybody likes the drama. So when you saw that Washington, Oregon game, everyone watched it, and it was amazing. And Phoenix kept showing up. Phoenix is, an, is he's dynamic. He's got great receivers. He's got a great run game. And he doesn't get touched as a quarterback. That line is amazing. Now, I want to go to Texas. Their strength is that they got some horses on that defensive line. We saw how they stuffed the run. Got it. But that secondary, they are going to be challenged by those Washington receivers. And that is where the chink in the armor is. And I, I'm sorry about that. Longhorn fans, but I just I'm worried about that secondary against these Washington um, receivers. And Washington is okay. You could shut down that run game, and they're not going to worry. They're not going to blink because they got Phoenix. Right. And he again, let me just remind you, he had to take it down to the wire, and he didn't blink in those games against Oregon and Washington. So, Longhorn fans, just go back, look at the highlights. Don't even watch the whole game if you don't want to. Just look at the highlights against Oregon, who we all respect as an amazing team, and then you'll just respect them a little bit more. But no one's disrespecting you, yeah. and I wouldn't sit here and disrespect you, Longhorn fans. Uh, I just want most people to just I, I can't I know I can't get all y'all. I just want most people to just recognize game 13 and 0. Washington Huskies are a serious team. Yeah, no, I, 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 I certainly appreciate that fact. This will be the, the most interesting thing about this game to me is that it's it's widely considered that Washington, if not the best offensive line in the country, one of the best offensive lines in yes, the country. Sir. And Texas defensive line, if not the best, one of the best <laughs> Fireworks. defensive lines. Um, and they're both better than they were last year. Yes, sir. And it's going to be very interesting to watch that battle yeah. in this game. Yes. And, and um, if nothing else – that may be the two lines that decide this game. Um, if if what you know Washington, if they can't run the football, and Texas finds a way to make Penix uncomfortable rushing just four or five, yeah, that's their secret to to beating the Washington offense. Yeah, um, I don't know if they can do it or not. That, that's a tall task, but um, I expect. Both teams will, will will be able to score points. I think it's going to be a shootout um, back and forth. And obviously, look, I'm going to I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to lean Texas. Yeah, I'm going to lean Texas. Um, Thirty-eight, thirty-five. Ooh, and a close one. I like that. So you guys are going to sling that rock. With the number one passing offense in all of college football. Mm. Travis, please be right. Yeah. I would love to see that. I want to see that. I want Quinn to go out there and, and, and uh, 
I'm saying this into the airwaves. I want Quinn to do it because I want Quinn to have a great game and leave because yeah. I want to see Art next year starting. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm rooting for. Go get him, Quinn. <laughs> All right. It's been a it's been a great show. Uh, appreciate you coming in. It's been a great year. It's great to be back on the air, folks. Thank you to Jay Hunt and Mary Nickerson yes. for helping make that possible that we're back here on the Fans View. Thank you to Albert Burdett for coming in today yeah. and sitting in with us. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. I hope your Christmas was fantastic. I hope your holidays have been great. Please have a safe and happy New Year. Enjoy enjoy your sports this weekend. And we'll see you back here next year on the Fans View. KAZI 88.7.